It's been well said that a person is known by the company he or she keeps. Well, in the world of rock and roll, there's one guy who pops up so often, you'd think he'd invented the backbeat. The Beatles featured him, along with Aldous Huxley and four Hindu masters, on the cover of their Sgt. Pepper's album. The photo montage was made up of what they called people we like and admire and our heroes. Their choice was a significant one. Aleister Crowley is generally considered to be the most important and influential occultist of the 20th century. Clever, well-educated, and a prolific writer, Crowley was a walking encyclopedia of occult thought and practice. Dubbed the wickedest man in the world by the British press, Crowley preferred his own pseudonym, The Great Beast 666. In August of 1914, the World Magazine published an account of some of the semi-public ceremonies Crowley held in London. Journalist Harry Kemp attended one such ritual and noted, Then came the slow, monotonous chant of the High Priest. There is no good, evil is good. All hail, Prince of the World, to whom even God himself has given dominion. Kemp continued, sounding for all the world, like he was describing any number of contemporary rock concerts. Men and women danced about, leaping and swaying to the whining of infernal and discordant music. They sang obscene words. Women tore their bodices, some partially disrobed. One fair worshiper, seizing upon the high priest's dagger, wounded herself in the breasts. At this, all seemed to go madder than ever. Such was Crowley's ministry at the age of 39. By the time he died 33 years later, fearful, sobbing, and with the last words, I am perplexed, upon his lips, his dark legacy had reached sufficient critical mass to almost single-handedly, in the words of occult writer Robert Anton Wilson, spark a worldwide revival of paganism. Well, in 1918, Crowley uh, took a great magical oath, which was a serious thing for Crowley. And he took an oath that he would surrender all of his magical powers that he had achieved until that date to concentrate his energy single-pointedly on the one task of uh, destroying Christianity and uh, reviving uh, paganism. And I think if you look around the world, it's pretty obvious that Crowley has been uh, a remarkable success. The paganism has made a big comeback in an organized way neo-pagan groups in an unorganized way, our whole society has become more pagan. I'll tell you, when I was a kid I read Robert Anton Wilson and all this shit, and here we are, we're standing here, we're talking about this shit, and it's real. If you do these things that you're told by Arthur Crowley, if you actually do what they say, things happen. Things occur exactly as it's described, and we can all do it. I want some In 1971, Timothy Leary had an epiphany during a tarot reading that utilized a set of cards designed by Crowley. His revelation? That he was Crowley reborn and was to complete the work Crowley began, preparing humanity for cosmic consciousness. Leary acknowledged this powerful connection with the great beast in a letter to Wilson, observing that the coincidences, synchronicities between my life and his are embarrassing. From this connection flowed frequent references to Crowley, his philosophy, and their common destinies in Leary's writings and speech. Well, I've been an admirer of Aleister Crowley. I think that uh, I'm carrying on much of the work that uh, he started uh, over a hundred years ago, and I think the 60s themselves. You know, Crowley said, uh, um, he was in favor of, uh, of uh, finding your own self and, and uh, uh, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law under love. It was a very powerful statement. I'm sorry he isn't around now to appreciate the glories that he started. The phrase, do what thou wilt, 
was taken from the Book of the Law, Crowley's most renowned work and one whose composition is worth understanding in the context of our study. While visiting Egypt in 1904, Crowley's first wife, Rose, began going into spontaneous trances, muttering things like, They are waiting for you, and he who was waiting was Horus. Intrigued, Crowley and Rose went to visit the Cairo Museum. From a distance she spied a glass case and exclaimed, There, there he is. Upon inspection, the case did contain an image of Horus painted on a wooden stele. But what particularly stunned Crowley was its exhibit number, 666, his number, the number of the beast. Convinced now that something supernatural was happening, Crowley went back to his hotel and performed a ritual, summoning this higher power. Over three successive days, beginning on April 8th, the book was channeled through Crowley while in a trance. And the content of this revelation? I am the snake that giveth knowledge, the spirit said. To worship me take wine and strange drugs, whereof I will tell my prophet. Falling on precisely the wrong side of the Bible's account concerning the fall of man and Satan's role, this snake spirit begins the revelation by telling man that he is a god, that reality is essentially an illusion, sin a myth, and that ethically there's no greater commandment than the law of Philema, Greek for will, as famously stated in the 40th verse of chapter 1. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. We do what we want to do when we want to do it. Today that same law has been written, spoken, or sung about by more contemporary artists than even Robert Anton Wilson would have imagined. John Lennon, Jim Morrison, the Black Crows Chris Robinson, and Marilyn Manson have all trotted it out in one form or another as words to live by. Harry Smith inserted it into the original handbook that came with his renowned anthology of American folk music. It shows up in songs by Mudvayne. David Bowie, The Only Ones, The Electric Hellfire Club, Alphaville, Throbbing Gristle, Numb, Ancient Ceremony, Eddie and the Hot Rods, Death SS, Theater of Tragedy, Cult Disciples, Therion, Psychic TV, Celtic Frost, Bruce Dickinson, Moonspell, Graham Bond, Sepultura, Edge of Sanity, The Lords of the New Church, and Marilyn Manson, among others. The band 311 not only uses Crowley's law as a lyric, the bass player had it tattooed on his leg, as well as Crowley's tree of life design on his back. <laughs> 